this video I'm going to demonstrate <clears throat> how to paint a, a shad and it seems like nowadays everybody's painting shads with a whole scheme of different colors and shades and and uh, but you know I like to try to get as close to real forage as possible so uh, a tournament bass angler actually sent me a photo of a shad that he wanted me to paint and mimic and so this is what we're gonna we're gonna paint today is the shad so I started out with <clears throat> doing a white base coat this body style is called the deep CB <clears throat> and I did a white base coat and now I'm gonna go in with a um, an iridescent white or like a pearl white and we'll just do a quick coat here doesn't take much at all. Okay, now we're going to go in here and uh, heat set. Every layer of paint I spray, I do a heat set with a hairdryer. Okay, so what I did next was put a scale mask on the lure body. And I'm using one of those loofahs that you can get at Target um, in the bath section. And then I, I cut the loofahs up and I wrap them real tight with uh, alligator clips. This is what it kind of looks like. Makes a real nice scale pattern. <clears throat> um, what I'm going to do now is I want just a real faint scale pattern. Uh, nothing overwhelming, but just a, a hint of a scale pattern so we know it's there. And I have a little bit of a, a gray in my brush. And just a nice thin application of gray. Okay, probably doesn't look like much there, but you'll see once we take the mask off. Heat set that. And I'll take the scale mask off. And there's your scale pattern. You know it's there, but it's not really overwhelming and and taken away from the rest of the bait. But uh, it's there nonetheless. Okay, now we're going to start working on the uh, <clears throat> on the the back of the, the lure, and <clears throat> we're just going to take a couple layers to get the color that we need. So I'm going to start with a gold uh, base coat of a uh, wicked gold, and it should be reduced down a little bit because it is kind of thick. So we're going to paint the back and the eyes and gills. And this will take probably a few coats. Don't flood it too much with gold all at once. Heat set each layer for each coat. Doesn't look like I'm putting on much now, but I'm going to heat set and put another coat on. painting and build up that color. A little bit on the gills, and on the eyes. Heat set, we'll probably do one more coat. you're hearing filling up the, the tank. Alright, no more gold. Just barely down the sides. And the 
skill area in the ice. Okay, and uh, we'll heat set that again. Okay, next we're going to uh, deepen that gold color, <clears throat> really make it pop. And the way we're going to do that is uh, I take uh, a wicked color. It's called uh, detailed sepia, and I love this color because it really enhances a lot of the base colors. It's not just a brown that comes out of the out of the bottle. <clears throat> if you thin it out or reduce it and uh, spray it lightly, it really makes base colors pop and I do that a lot with my baits uh, you know try like uh, a base green and then use a little uh, sepia you know really darken up that green nicely like for um, if you're gonna paint a bass bait or, or a bait that looks like a bass <clears throat> but you'll see here now um, when I paint the back of this of the gold with the sepia it's really gonna deepen the color and make it pop and we're not gonna use a lot but um, and the paint's thin enough where it'll still, that gold base will still come through. So let's go lightly. Just a little bit of paint. See, it started to darken up. I'm not even using a lot. A little bit around the eyes and the gills. See, and that's really all you need. Um, let me put this down here so you can see it better. So it really enhances the gold color. And then I'll show you the, the reference photo. So we're kind of getting there. And uh, I can even go in and darken up the back a little bit too. But it's always good to have a reference photo handy so you can check your progress. Alright, so the next step now would be the infamous shad dot that you see on so many baits. And uh, those dots, I know you see on a lot of baits are are all over the place as far as where they are on the body, but I'll show you the correct place to put it. Okay, I did darken up the back a little bit <clears throat> um, when the camera is off, but now we're going to move on to the shad dot. <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, you see a lot of baits and that dot is all over the place, whether it's down here, or it's in the back, or in the middle of the back. <clears throat> Again, you go by the reference photos because I want my base to be as realistic to real forage as possible. And if you look at the reference photo, that shad dot is right where the gold and the silverish part of the body uh, kind of come together. And um, a lot of people use, um, use stencils to make the dot, and I used to do that but I want it to be as realistic as possible so I kind of taught myself how to freehand that dot. <clears throat> it takes kind of a steady hand but you're gonna get a much better result I think. So <clears throat> let's see if I can do that here. I've lowered the pressure to about 10 psi. You don't want paint flying all over the place. You want the paint a little thicker too. Too watery, it's the, the air pressure is gonna spider web the paint. So lower the air pressure and hold a little steady hand A little bit of paint and there it is and it looks natural it's not with a stencil all right now we're gonna flip the bait around and do the other side okay, I'm gonna do it in the same spot right where the gold and the, and the silver or gray kind of meet That's it, that's all you really need. There, and there. I'm gonna heat set that, and as far as painting, believe it or not, that is all there is. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna take through the rest of the process too, I'm not gonna stop here, but I'm gonna put the eyes on, and I'm gonna clear coat, and you'll see how these colors really pop and kind of come to life when you, uh, when you clear coat. Okay, I took the uh, <clears throat> the wrapping off the bill that was protecting the overspray. Uh, now we're going to add some eyes, and I go to Tackle Warehouse and get their 
their eyes because I love how realistic they are. Uh, these are by Boss uh, and uh, they're 3D eyes, they're self-adhesive and uh, you just take the eyes I usually use an exacto knife so I can better place them and pop them right in these are six millimeter eyes very realistic right, let me put the other eye on Just press them together, make sure they're on good. Very realistic. Okay, now we're going to clear coat. Okay, for clear coating, I use a um, I use Devcon's two-ton, thirty-minute clear epoxy. It comes in different colors, mostly yellow. Make sure you get the clear. Uh, if you get the yellow by accident, and start clear coating your bait. You're going to be a very unhappy. <coughs> I just take a little Dixie cup and I cut cut part of it off so it's easier to get to it. And I mix the two. See, it comes in a syringe. I mix the two in here. Mix it really well for about 30, 40 seconds. And then we will start applying long, even strokes. And that will make sure you get the bubbles out. Even those scales will pop a little bit more too. You can probably see those. Long, even strokes. I know some people use a moisture cure urethane. Uh, if you're going to use that, you're probably going to need, well not probably, but you will, need a, uh, a drying turner, kind of like a rotisserie motor and a metal rod to turn your baits so the clear coat doesn't pool up in one spot. Um, I keep it here on my uh, jeweler's helping hands. Um, sometimes I get a little bit of pooling but not very often though I should get a, a drying wheel or make one. Nice even strokes here. That gold is really starting to pop it looks just like our reference photo. And I have caught fish on this color. It's a great color. It was designed or yeah, designed by a tournament bass angler out in Virginia. Make sure you get every spot here. Around the gills, long even strokes, no bubbles, and I think we just about got it all. So that is our shad. Give you the reference photo here. That's what we did, and this catches fish. So give it a try and experiment with um, you know blending the colors like I did with the gold and the sepia. Try different different colors and use a sepia or other little darker colors that are thinned out uh, to make those colors pop. Because sometimes or most of the time, the color you want to achieve isn't done just with one bottle of paint. It's going to take layers of paint. So good luck.